wherever you are, close your eyes. Unless you're driving or flying a plane, then absolutely don't close your eyes. Or if you're cycling, don't do that. Actually, keep keep your eyes open. Yeah. And think, with with your eyes open, about winning. Feels pretty great, doesn't it? And now you can do it anywhere with the National Lottery app. <laughs> Download the National Lottery app today. Play anywhere, win anywhere. Welcome to Take Two Radio Soaps in Review. I'm David, your host. And with us tonight, we have our group and Miss Judith Chapman, who is going to be Ju. Let me see if I can get them all in. I can't. Casey? Please hold. Pam? Nope. Please hold people. Okay. Carolyn, Casey, Casey, I'm sorry, yeah, Casey, oh no, don't tell me the music, oh, oh, I'm so sorry, it'll be over soon. Everything can go wrong, right? Um, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> let's go ahead and get started um, with our questions, and I'm going first. Um, there, one of the co-hosts, Frankie, could not call in tonight, so I'm going to ask his question. 
And it is, I think that Gloria has been misunderstood. Let me turn my phone up. I can, all right, let me see. All right, go ahead. Okay. First of all, I think hello, everybody. Gloria, hello. <laughs> 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 Only live radio. Um, yep. I I think that Gloria has been misunderstood, despite the fact that she's been on Young and the Restless canvas for 13 years. Would you like the writers to explore her backstory, such as why she married abusive men, the reason she stayed with Terrible Tom, her shortcomings as a mother to Michael and Kevin? Hmm. Well, the thing is, I think they have, kind of in the the first go-around for the first nine years or so, they did cover that a lot. And a yeah. lot of heart-to-heart with Kevin and Michael and anger. And when I started back up, and, and, uh, and Mal and I, my very first day on the show, which, of course, was the Christmas show, Popping Out of the Box, um, Mal and I were speaking. We never met. And so I was like, thank you for having me back. You didn't even wonder what I look like these days. <laughs> but I said, I ho- everybody has gotten so used to goofy Gloria and comedic right. Gloria and all this funny stuff. But I said, in the early days, and I hope you will touch on this, there was a lot of trauma. She denied she even had these kids. So, so she didn't want John Abbott to be upset. She was disowning them. Um, but they, but they have touched on it in just these few months that I've been on the show. And it, it, I think um, case in point was the other day when this heartfelt stuff with, with, um, with um, Kevin and the marriage and how much she truly loves these kids. But I think right. she was, and Christian and I used to talk about this when we said I was so, Gloria was so young when she got caught up with the wrong men. And I think if anybody knows. It can happen, and I. But I'm so glad they have touched on it. And there has always been that little bit of tension between between Michael and Gloria, and even Kevin just dismissing his mother. And so now, so I believe they are. Whether they revisit the whole backstory of because they even hired a young actor and actress to play me younger version. So they did real flashbacks. That Gloria had gotten involved with these with them, uh, not a cult, but they were they were activists and they were anti-war and, and she got caught up in this. So I think she was just so young, so impressionable. And this was uh, Kevin's father, not Michael, Michael's father, um, played by the wonderful actor from Family Ties. Um, I, just, I just went blank on his name. Help me, somebody. Uh, Michael Grove. Michael Gross. I just saw him recently, and we were talking about how wonderful. But that so she was influenced by men. Even John Abbott, she was influenced by. So she's always. I think Gloria has always looked for a father figure. She's never always been out on the streets. Byers, not that she was a hooker, but just being influenced by anybody who would take care of her, anybody who would be nice to her. Well, sometimes when men are nice to a young impressionable. And maybe not so young and brushable woman that she gets taken advantage of. Gloria even always leads with her heart. I'll follow you any place to the ends of the earth. I'll give you all my right. money. I'll sacrifice everything for love. And what woman hasn't done that at some point in her life? Maybe one may make exactly it for yeah. myself. So, but I don't know if they will ever revisit it because I think they really did a good job when I first came on the show. But I hope the ever-evolving relationship with, with Gloria and her son, and it was very clear the other day, and Michael saying, don't you mess on with, on his parade. Don't rain on his parade. Don't do this. And, uh, and I think she had a whole new coming of awareness that how how wonderful Kevin is and how much he's grown because he was so damaged. They're all damaged. Michael was damaged, you know, when he first came on the show. So they're just exactly. a damaged. They, they are a damaged family. And I think, but they're coming out of the ashes and rising again and it warms my heart. Definitely. And it's so true to real life families. You know, a lot of them out there are like that. And that's what I love about soaps. Not only that you get to live in a fantasy world, but also they touch on reality. And I think that's what draws draws in the viewers. 
Absolutely. Well, if they do it from the heart and with sincerity and with true honesty and the actors do their homework and bring that reality to it, then it's tra- it's it's a story. It's not gimmicks. It's not CGI. It's not things being blown up all the time. It's uh, gut-wrenching, sometimes humorous, sometimes tragic uh, human stories, the human condition. For sure. And that's yeah, why we're still around after 44 years or why the few remaining soaps are still around because of these stories that connect to exactly. um, humanity. Exactly. And we want you guys around another 44 years, please. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yes. 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 Amen. We all try to keep watching the four that are left because we know that, you know, and I've said this before, that, you know, the viewers out there sometimes say, well, I'm not watching until so-and-so is back together, or I don't like this storyline or something. But you can't stop watching if you really love soaps because you know eventually that's going to change. And, you know, it's always revolving and evolving, and you have to just keep watching if you just love it, no matter if you don't like it at that moment, to keep it on air. Well, what what I've always said about soaps is, Soaps are so daily. You don't mm-hmm. know what's going to happen tomorrow in your own life. You don't know right. what's going to happen. So why can't that same truth be, uh, apply to characters on soap operas? Sometimes when we get scripts, we go, you want me to do what? I've got to do what? <laughs> Where did that come from? You know, what kind of wine were you drinking last night when you came up with this craziness? <laughs> but that's the beauty of it. And that, you know, I've done so many different soaps and I've had the good fortune, as I, I consider myself a working actor, that I've had mm-hmm. so many wonderful um, stints on soap operas. But I've done so much nighttime. I've done feature films. But, you know, if you look at it, if you really like being an actor, soaps give you so much variety, longevity variety, being a being a diversity, being a... Um, um, a, a working actor, but the, you know the stars on these nighttime series. God bless them for the ensemble pieces. They, you do get arcs and have a true storylines, but some of them are solving the same murder. They're looking for the same weapon. They're looking at the same corpses, and there's really not a lot of growth or diversity within the right. shows. As wonderful as they are, I've got my favorites. I, you know. I've got my shows that I watch, but it's like, God, I wonder if they're making a ton of money, uh, which is true, but um, I wonder if they're feeling fully satisfied, gratified. Exactly. And and the nighttime nighttime shows don't last as long as soap, so there you go. There you go. I mean, the rare ones like the NCIs and, you know, the franchises that have been, been so successful. But look at the West Wing. He has one of my new favorite shows is Designated Survivor with Kiefer Sutherland. But look at all the ongoing, evolving storyline. It's a nighttime soap opera. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah. And um, Dallas was the original nighttime soap opera a million years ago to have these evolving, not just episodic and a storyline ending in an hour. So some of them do it. And those are the ones with longevity. Or the spinoffs. Look at NCIS. Yeah. 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 Exactly, but they still haven't even been around as long as soap. So, oh no, 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 uh, no. We, yeah. we, 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 we were, you know, because we were originally on the radio to sell soap. Mm-hmm. You know, right. we all give them a little story while we're Procter and Gamble's, you know, selling Tide or whatever it was, and uh, that's where the name came from, of course. But uh, I did when I first did my first soap opera a million years ago in the last century. Uh, which are the last millennium, I should say, uh, which is pretty strange to say. I straddle millennia, which is great. But I did, I was so impressed with the the fans, the friends of the show, who spent their hard-earned money to come to New York uh, to by bus, by train, by covered wagon, who knows, to spend an afternoon with me, not just me, but all the collective soap people who were on the show. And I said, I want to film this. I want to photograph this. So I made a small documentary film about it. And it it followed my then still friend, Greg Northam, the fan, uh, my president of my then fan club, lived in Virginia. I sent my, my cameraman and 
people down to Virginia, and I said, get on the bus with him, follow. I said, give me that huge panoramic view of New York skyline as he's coming to New York to spend you know, time with his favorite soap operas. And uh, I said, then cut to the convention. The very first spoken word out of one actress's mouth, she said, not even your best friend visits you five days a week at the same time. Wow, isn't that that true? That's it. That's right. We got it. That is exactly what soap operas are. Not even your best friend visits you five days a week at the same time. And sometimes we don't like our best friend. Sometimes we don't speak to our best friend. Sometimes we say, go away. I'll call you when I'm speaking to you again. So maybe that's exactly what it is. Friends, fans, friends of the soaps who say, I'm not going to watch it because I don't like this or I don't like that or I don't like the way they decorated this house or took down that company or whatever. It's like they're just, they're, they're not happy with their best friend. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting way to think of it, I think. Yeah, wow. that definitely sums it up. Um, Casey, why don't you go ahead with your question? Um, hi, Judith. First of all, I hi, love you and I just got two quick questions for you. Okay. Um, so my first question for you is, do you remember your very first day on The Young and the Restless? Absolutely. Did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, that answers my question. <laughs> See, like I said, two very short questions wasn't mine. Yeah, very <laughs> but it, I mean, I can elaborate on it. No, I, how could I ever forget? Because I hadn't done a soap opera in about 12 years, the last one had been Days of Our Lives, in the early 90s. And I didn't start Young and the Restless until 2004, 2005. And I was ready to go, but I walked on set. I walked on the sound stage, and I could see the back of the camera guys and the camera, and the set was lit where I had to work. And it was the Jabot, no, the Newman Jabot Conference. That who is sitting at the table looking at a script was the, the great Eric Braden. And I went, okay, with everything I've heard about Eric Braden. So I walked on set at, from behind the camera, so started off on in the, the middle of the sound stage. Oh my God, oh my God, my very first day on The Young and the Restless, and my very first scenes are with Eric Braden. And, of course, the camera people and everybody is like, what, is she out of her mind? And But I could see this little curl in the corner of his mouth that I said, please, you know, I've been around. I'm not going to be intimidated by you. I mean, Eric and I have been great friends, great uh, on-set friends ever since then. And at the end of it, he stood up and he shook my hand. He said, you're very good. You're very, 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 very good. He said, everybody, this Judith, she's good. <laughs> <Where Aww. I'm, laughs> because I said, I'm going to break the ice. I'm not going to be, oh, gosh, really scared. And so how could I ever forget that? So, And it was so well received. I couldn't have planned it better. It was just completely organic and spontaneous. Now, so my, first, my next question, question. Yeah. Is um, so for a while, Gloria was front burner, and you know we saw her every day, and she became really a fan favorite. And yeah. then there were a couple years there where she slowly started to shift to the back burner. And I don't know about the rest of the Y and R fans, but that made me really sad to see my glow go for a while. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, Glow, yeah, Glow got gone. She really got, uh, and I think it was just a, a change of, of um, the, a new regime came in, and they just decided to do things their way, and it just, and it was very sad. And now the regime has changed again, and I'm back. And it's yeah, but to see myself slowly slide, in, I used to say, I'm so back burner, I'm not even in the kitchen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You know, with well, thank the you, new thank regime God. coming in, um, we have a writer, and this is so amazing. We have a writer who actually honors the history of the show, and oh, yeah. one of those parts of history is you, of course. And so, what is it like once again being shifted into front burner storyline and having great material again? What is that experience like for you to kind of come back home, so to speak? It's in a word, fantastic. 
one word answer again, Casey. But <laughs> it is such an honor, such a thrill because, and I've told other interviewers, and this is true, I said I've made peace with it. I live in the desert. I don't live in Los Angeles. I teach yoga. I still teach a couple of yoga classes a week. And I, but I was do, doing a lot of theater. I was traveling and touring the country with my one-woman show, Vivian. So I was working. But it, as I saw the soap opera fade into the distance, and I and it took me a while, but I had to make peace with it, and I had made peace with it. And then when they, um, when I got that call, it was, oh my heavens, oh my heavens, and a little nerve, nervous to go back on set, but to be working with Christian and Greg and my TV family, it was as if we'd never missed a beat. And it was, I just call it manna from heaven, and thank you, Sally Sussman, and thank you, all the powers that be that um, wanted Crazy Glow back and are not only giving her the humor, but letting me dig into those family um, heartaches and bruises, scars again. I mean, that's just great. That's just great. Any actor worth his salt would just be, God, I'm lucky. I'm lucky and grateful. Well, and, you know, you say you never, you know, you and Greg and uh, Krista never missed a beat. And let me tell you, it shows up on screen. As soon as you popped out of the box on the Christmas episode, I was like, wonderful, fantastic. I'm getting a piece of The Young and the Restless back. So yeah. good job to you, and it's just amazing to see you back. Well, they, you know, they, people, people say, oh, well, how did you see your comeback? And I had, I had some ideas. But when I got that script, I said I could never have been that creative or imaginative or anything. And um, and uh, and so kudos to the writing staff, kudos to Salad, because I did send an email to uh, to uh, to Mal, and I said, so I said I know nothing. I said, where is Gloria? Is she rich? Is she impoverished? Is she in jail? Is she? God knows where, and she, and and he t- he said, don't reveal it. He said, but you're dead broke, and so I made the choice as an actor. I'm very actor studio, and I, and I said, I'm not going to dye my hair blonde. I'm going to look. And I even told the costume. I said, you know, I'm really not that size two anymore. I'm really more comfortable in ooh size four, maybe even a six, because I gained a couple of pounds. You know, no big deal. And I mean, I'm healthy and. Uh, and uh, so I wanted that arc. So people would say, why is your hair blonde? I don't like it. It's, I did it. I said, Gloria was so broke, she couldn't buy a bottle of peroxide. <laughs> now she's got a job. She can afford peroxide again. So it's wonderful, again, going back to the theater, what we call it an arc, A-R-C, to start someplace. But if Gloria had come in with perfectly coiffed hair and, you know, every time you close, of course, it's fabulous from the day one. But to have a place to go and to find her way, and now that she is at Jabot, not where she wants to end up at Jabot, but she's getting a little more refined again. The hair that so it's been great fun and to um, you know to evolve, evolve as Gloria did from the first time around when I started. She had nothing. She knew nothing, and she learned how to be a little more of a lady and learned about food and fashion and everything from um, John Abbott. And so now, now uh, yeah, it's great fun to evolve. Well, thank you, Casey, for the great questions. Yeah, and, great, um, questions. great questions. Because I don't get a chance to say that because I get so, ooh, I liked you better with blonde hair. Why don't you do your, it's like, I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> Stay with me. Life is so daily in soap opera. So, and you don't know, just, boom. So, but you, oh, her hair looks better. Oh, I like the blonde. So, having yeah. some <laughs> to go. Having some, as well, we I do one will be. in our own lives. So, so it is in soap life. Exactly. I, for one, will be sticking with you. And I, and I, but I did, I did promise, I did uh, tell uh, Ella of our brilliant costume, I said, you watch me. I'll be back in those size twos again by Christmas. And I, <laughs> and I, and I <laughs> <laughs> It hasn't been easy. That's the hardest part. It's like, oh, God. Scallions and radishes. Scallions <laughs> diet. And water. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all worth it. It's all worth it. It's all worth it. 
Definitely. Um, okay, David, why don't you go on with your question? Judith, I go back a little further. Um, I caught you on the tail end of your last, on As the World Turns, oh. where you played Natalie Bannon Hughes. So what was it like going head to head with Eileen Fulton? They were grooming they were grooming Natalie to be the next Eileen Fulton. And I was only supposed to be there for five days. Well I guess I did something right because they kept me on for several years and flash forward I did this crazy film called False Face, or it was originally Scalpel. I think it was originally False Face and changed it to Scalpel. And Robert Lansing played my husband, lover, father, or not father, lover, father. It was an identity thing. And uh, But he said at one point, he said, you got to get off this soap opera and get your butt to L.A. It's time for you to go to L.A. and explore L.A. And I went, oh, okay. And lo and behold, flash forward a bit. And my agent called and said, I have an audition for you. And I decided to move to L.A. And so I decided and said goodbye to, um, to As the World and, and made, decided to make this big leap to Los Angeles with no job, no friends, no home, no, nothing, and no car. Had never really driven, you know, a lot uh, because I didn't have a car in college. And, you know, you're in New York. You don't need a car. But I got out there, and literally my first audition was for Dallas. I literally got off the plane and went straight to Laura Marge to audition for Dallas. I didn't get it, but it was down, It was between me and Victoria Principal. But I had, they'd lost all my bags, and I had my New York clothes. I had fry boots on, and my hair was all permed out and very curly at the time. And, they were, and she walked into the final interview she I'm in my baggy clothes I've got my Annie Hall look I call it and because that's all I had and in walks the competition I give you Miss Victoria Principal in her black spandex pants her black t-shirt high heels big stiletto heels and sequins on her t-shirt in the shape of Texas and over her right chest a star for Dallas and I just oh, went, wow I said, oh, um, I, th- I, th- I think I'm in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> a little different from New York. So that, um, that was my first experience leaving As the World Turns and the sanctuary of As the World Turns and um, soap operas. My first foray. And lo and behold, all those years later, Ted Shackelford ended up, we worked together on um, on um, Young and Netflix. Yeah, isn't that something, how that came around? I mean, Dallas oh, and not planning, and then Young and the Restless. <laughs> I know. It's just, hey, working actors, working actors. It's a, it's a right. gift. Long, longevity and diversity. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you, David. Carolyn, why don't you go ahead David. with your I, questions? You're taking, you're taking me down memory lane. This is a boot. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's Carolyn. How is everyone doing? (laughs) I'm doing great, Carolyn. Beautiful down here in the desert. It's a little windy today. Where are y'all? Where are y'all? I'm in Florida. Oh, okay. And Um, I'm I'm in Chicago. (laughs) That's right. That's right. So we're all over the place. We're all over the place. So what's up? What what do you want to know, Carolyn? (laughs) What deep dark well, secrets um, of mine do you want to know? <laughs> maybe I'll share. Maybe I won't. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, be- well, before my question, you are a firecracker. Oh my goodness! I said you're something else. <laughs> Thank you. You're so old. Have you written a book? No, I have to. I have to. No, no, no. Oh my I think goodness! About it. I toy about it. I think about it. In fact, I started a little semi-autobiographical thing uh, years ago, and to do it on stage, to do a one-woman show on stage, based upon the well, crazy life of a working actor. Yeah. <laughs> well, it would, be a, it would be a bestseller. You just have so many interesting uh, snippets. It's, it's great. Really nice, Thank really you. nice meeting you. Um, my question is, of, um, of all your soap <clears throat> opera husbands, who is your favorite and why? 
So I'm, I'm going down the list. I said, oh, it's married to him. When I was married to, to Tom Hughes, going back to the original, but he gave me some, one of the best pieces of advice. So each of them have contributed to my growth in different ways. But going back to David Colson, who ended up being a writer on, on As the World Turns, but I was only supposed to be there for five days. And after a few days, they couldn't get, had me back for another day and had me back. And David came up to me one day and he said, Judith, I, I'm going to tell you something and do with it what you will. He said, have an attitude. I said, what? He said, pick, a, pick an emotion, whether you're super nice or super nasty or just get a whatever. And it, was, it, was, it just clicked. He said, just bring it, bring it to camera. And if they like it, they'll start writing you that way. If they don't like it, they'll tell you, they'll direct you in another direction. And it was, and that's how I became Nasty Natalie. Because oh. I said, I don't want, I don't want to play a goody two shoes. That was uh, his other wife. I can't remember the beautiful gal, the redhead, gorgeous redhead. And Martha. so that's, but I have evolved, and I've always told that to young actors. I've, so I've shared that. So that's what I got from that husband. Um, who did I marry next? Uh, oh, General Hospital. We'll gloss over General Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> but John Abbott. John Abbott. I was. It was Jerry. Was so sweet when I first started on the show. He kind of put his arm around me and said, "Don't worry, kid. I'll take care of you. I've been doing this a long time." And I'm like, "So right, uh, Jerry." <laughs> <laughs> Probably the most fun and the most supported. I've ever been was being married to Ted Shackleton and working with Ted all the time. Yeah. Because I was married to him twice. I was married to his stuffy twin, and then I was married to reckless bad boy, bad boy. What was his name? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Gloria. And, and well, yeah, so it, it, all of them, all of them, yeah, they, all of them bring something different. All of them bring something different. But um, I don't think I was ever married on One Life to Live. I don't think I was married on Ryan's Hope. No, but I worked with him. You know, the Ryan boy wanted to kill a young man, the, the, the son. And uh, But, yeah, I think really I haven't had that many husbands. Yeah, and no, that's unusual on soap operas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because Tom Hughes is my notes. only husband on that one, and and, and Ted and, and Jerry, of course. Right. But you know, I, speaking of Jerry, I I heard a rumor yesterday um, that the Young and the Restless is possibly going to bring him back um, alive as John Abbott. Now, what? Are your thoughts on that, both as yourself and as what would Gloria think if they found out John was alive? Oh, God. Soaps are so daily. Where do they come up with it? I mean, I not really believe it was a mistake to kill off the past the arc of the show. And, oh, you know, yeah. look, it, I mean, it's still, people still mention that once in a while. And um, so I, 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 I have no comment about it. I just, if it happens, I mean, I loved it when they brought him back as a ghost. I thought that was the oh, yeah. funniest, funniest darn stuff we, I, I had got to do. And then, and then him, the, 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 the lucky Jerry playing the alcoholic actor, out of work actor to play the ghost. I mean, what a, what a wonderful thing. So where the heck has he been all these years? That's what I yeah. Mean. Yeah, well, maybe there's, that, maybe there's a bad was, Gloria out there that's kept him locked up somewhere. <laughs> maybe, who knows, who knows. That was one of the most beautiful things when when uh, his character, when John Abbott was so ill. And one of my favorite scenes on Young and the Restless when, was my bedside scene when I was saying goodbye and the, the big debate whether to take him off um, life support and... Um, to this day, I think it's one of some of my best work on any soap opera. Whether him saying goodbye, when I said, "If you if you want go, I'll let you go." Ugh, tough, 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 tough. Yeah, 
Yeah. First and those are the things that make us all cry. <laughs> exactly. And those are the things that, as, for me as an actor and, and for Gloria, that we remember that stuff, that it's just mm-hmm. not goofy Gloria. Mm-hmm. And that right. there is so much diversity within her character and, and so much complexity, I should say, not diversity, complexity. As, it, as mm-hmm. in all of some days, some days we're hysterical, and some days we're not very happy. Right. Such as right. life. Right. Just so you know, and it works both ways, but the viewers don't realize that the actors also do things that they don't want to do, but it's part of their job, and they have to do it. They Absolutely. Get paid. Absolutely. 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 And, um, and um, you know, stretch yourself, challenge yourself, try to mm-hmm. figure out how you can make this work. That's the beauty of this life. Ugh. Okay, okay, making it, keeping it real, keeping it sincere, keeping it true um, is the challenge, and that's what we actors have to go home and do our homework and work on scenes, not just show up that morning and say, oh, I'm saying what? No, giving it a lot of thought and purpose. (laughs) That's true, it's true. And not just, as they say, phoning it in. Don't. Right. Don't, don't, don't Don't insult the writing, because how much mm-hmm. time and effort it takes and months out to develop these storylines. And don't insult the viewers right. by, by not giving it your all every single day. Exactly. Because if you're exactly. phoning it in, I think that you need to, you know, move on to something else then because you're bored exactly. or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. And, I, and I've said that when I was in my long time ago, I think when I first started on As the World Turns, I, you know, I was still very young, and I was doing things and working, and I said, God, please, if this doesn't make me happy someday, give me the good sense to go do something else, mm-hmm. and I have reached that point a couple of times, and one, when I um, uh, had moved to the desert, and I was on Days of Our Lives at the time, but I, it, it wasn't making me happy. And I went to the College of the Desert and introduced myself to the head of the fine arts department, Dr. Norman. And I said, you know, I've been a working actor. I said, I live here in the desert. If you ever want me to come talk to your students about working in New York or working in L.A. or soap operas or movies, or he signed me up right there, and I ended up teaching there for several semesters. In fact, they would have had to give me tenure, so they fired me instead. <laughs> but by taking a break, and I called my agent, I said, I'm not happy, I'm not happy. I just feel like I'm phoning it in, uh, not just on soap operas, but in everything. But by going back and teaching and literally going back to the classroom and working with young actors, I found my passion for directing, and I found out I was a good director, and I knew I had a lot to offer, and I was a good mm-hmm. teacher. But it so recharged my battery that when I went back to Hollywood and embraced Hollywood again, especially on Young and the Restless, I was fired up and ready to go. So, yeah, sometimes you got to step away to, to uh, figure out where you are in your passion or level of passion. Sometimes when right. that passion wanes, it is good to step away. Take right. a break. So I this completely after, agree. You know, most people just like, eh, no, no, no. or they complain about it. And I said, it's like, really, actors? Really? You're going to complain about this job? I dare you to quit. Go stand in line with the rest <laughs> yeah. of the actors who would yeah. kill to be in your place and who right. will not take it for granted. So, yeah. Right. Well, I have one last thing I'd like to mention before we let you go. Um, I saw that someone posted on your Facebook page that there's going to be a featured interview with you and Peter Bergman. And you probably can't say a whole lot about it at this point, but can you tell us when that issue of Soaps and Death will be out? I I think, Pam, I think it comes out this week and later in the week. Good Friday. Good Friday. Um, so good, good Soaps in Depth article. Yes, yeah, so about Peter. And it really wasn't so much about storyline. It was more interviewing Peter and myself about how we, how we embrace this crazy storyline. And I think I even said in the article, I said, God, I'm back on the show two weeks and you got me naked and in bed. Yeah. <laughs> With my arch enemy. You know, this man I hate and blame for my ruin. 
show is the, <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, let's go with this. So the article is really interesting because it's Peter and I reflecting on, on how we feel about working together in this in, uh, in the past, in the present, going forward, and this crazy storyline and getting drunk and ending up in bed together. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. That sounds like a great article, and I can't wait to read it. So, everybody, go we'll run out on Friday and get your copy of Soaps and Death. Yes, so go out, read it. Buy, buy those soap magazines. Buy those soap magazines. Keep them going. Don't just read everything online. You know, exactly. really go out and buy those hard copies at the grocery store or wherever you buy them. And keep these things on, on keep these things front and center. Because this is our, this is our, this is our, um, or what do you call it? This is how we get known. Not just on Facebook, not just on Googling things. Go out and buy those magazines. You know, and I, I have to say that I prefer to have a hard copy of something like that, um, even with books, even though you can read everything out of mine. I enjoy going, you know, page to page and reading stuff. And mm-hmm. I think you get more information and more out of it than you do with yeah. just reading something online. And you might read an article that you weren't looking to read. Mm-hmm. You weren't even thinking. It's like, oh, oh, look at that. Oh, somebody's favorite recipe or somebody's whatever, whatever. Right. It is. And, uh, and but, the, you know, the printed page, newspapers, magazines are in dire straits these days. Everything's online. So I'm old-fashioned a little bit too, Pam. I say, let's go out and buy it. <laughs> and, and, it's great, and it's great for me because I still, I would go visit, have visited my mother and I'd be cleaning out some drawers where it's, and I said, oh, my God, as the world turns, how old is this damn? Oh, and all the pictures are in black and white. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, having having these wonderful dusty mementos in the bottom drawer that show up once in a while is is great. Yeah, I got quite a few myself here. So, and and every time I think, should I get rid of any of this stuff? Nope. My husband, yeah. I think it's yeah, time yeah, to get yeah. rid of some of this stuff. Nope. <laughs> oh, you show, you show your children or grandchildren back in the day. This is how we yeah. got our information. We had to go to the store and buy it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, my, we were cleaning out my grandma's uh, closet the other day to help her move into a smaller apartment. And we found a box of soap opera digest magazines. We're talking from every decade. And it was just amazing. So keep the stuff. Yeah, but I mean, I li- really, literally found it. And the, and the hairdos is like, oh my god, what was I thinking? <laughs> that <laughs> was the funniest a, part I think to the, see. The how clothes, the hairdos have evolved. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Especially my, the my 80s. Is, my, I, that, oh, the 80s. Well, you know, God, I not that's what it is now. But, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a hoot. It's a hoot. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, Judith. I absolutely oh. loved hearing all of your stories, and thank we'd you. love to have you back at any time. And okay, we'll keep well, watching it, you. It, it, well, I'm going to keep watching because I'm very, you've got my curiosity piqued about this Jerry Douglas thing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, 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 excuse, oh, gee, um, oh, father and son. Okay, let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it again. <laughs> oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Lord. Good. Okay, my friends, thank you so much. Have a wonderful, blessed, holy days, Passover, Easter, whatever it is you celebrate. It, it, Spring, happy spring, happy healthy Thank spring. you, thank you, thank you as you well. Did. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh my gosh, she's wonderful. I could listen to her. I all love night. her. <laughs> well, but then I encourage everybody. You know, go send her a friend request on Facebook because she is so active on social media and she loves yes. the fans. Yes, exactly. And I know there's a couple of pages um, for her on Facebook, so I'm not sure. I know I have one pulled up, but um, it's just under facebook.com slash judith.chapman.35. So, um, you know, check that one or check the other one. But, yeah, she's definitely very sociable, and I love that about her. 
Yeah, I do too. She's she's such a charmer. She Pam, is. How is great. she on? How how is she on Facebook? Uh, spell that again. Um, Facebook dot com slash Judith dot Chapman C H A P M A N dot thirty five is one of them oh. that I get pulled up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because I I couldn't find her. So okay. All right. I'll I'll send you the link and I'll post it on on Twitter for others that are looking. And like I said, there was another one too, and it might just be a fan page. Um, Let me see what comes up when I pull that up. So the one that um, you guys want to go to to send Judith a friend request and maybe chat with her. Um, her profile picture is her sitting with her two dogs, and it's yeah, that's got the I one. Heart PBS in the corner. So that yeah, is that's Judith's the one. official mm-hmm. Facebook. Okay. All right. Yeah, because I didn't know what this other one was when I was pulling it up. But it's, I mean, the last post on there is 2011, so I think that's an old page. So, mm-hmm. yes. Thank you, Casey. Yeah, so, no um, you know, it's we've been working on this for a while. I was supposed to have Judith on at some point in time uh, quite a while ago, but because of my dad dying and that, you know, we couldn't get it done. So I'm so happy that we finally got her on and that you guys were included in on this. And uh, uh, I want to thank you for your questions. And uh, I'm going to let you guys go so you can go on with reviewing what's going on with the soaps now. All righty. Thank you so much. It was great. You're welcome. We'll talk later. Go ahead, David. Take it away. Okay, I got it. Talk to you soon. Whoa, how about that? (laughs) (laughs) What did you think, guys? Not bad, huh? Fantastic. Yes. (laughs) It was. um, Yeah, quite a... Quite an interesting lady. She was. Oh, She's quite an interesting lady. So um, let's keep the ball rolling. Bold and the Beautiful. We'll start right off right there since none of that was covered first. So my first inkling is the Spectra show is up, is starting, and we know that they got stolen goods by using that damn brooch. So, Casey, how is this going to go down? Well, first, I'm B&D. Not my favorite soap of all time, but currently my favorite soap because it is like I am, you know, like the show's in 1989 again. And I just love it. And I can't wait to see where this whole um, stealing Forrester originals, um, again, you know, goes for the Spectre family. And it is just great. And I just wonder where it's going to go. I can't, I'm on the edge of my seat constantly. I'm like, are the police going to come in and arrest Sally or Coco and, You know, it's just, it's wonderful. And I cannot wait to see where the story goes. I cannot either. And in the backdrop, we got maybe two love stories going on with that. We got young love, Romeo and Juliet type with RJ and Coco. Do you think they have longevity? I do. And I just, you know... Daytime um, so rarely focuses on um, this sort of age range. It's more, you know, you either get them in their 20s or, you know, older than that. Um, And these are just out of um, college kids, and they're very young. And for being that young, it is the chemistry for me is off the charts. I mean, these kids can act. um, And I think because of great acting and great chemistry, this story is going to go somewhere. And I have a feeling it is going to thrive for a very long time and really usher in a great new generation of the bold and the beautiful. Are we going to get some positive romance from Thomas and Sally? 
I am actually more rooting for Saul and Sally. <laughs> um, I <laughs> love Pearson O'Day as Thomas. I think he's great. Um, you know, anybody knows I'm on social media. I want Caroline and Thomas back together. Um, I know Lindsay Godfrey is on recurring. God knows if she'll come back or not. But if that happens, then I would like them. But I'm kind of feeling Sally and Saul a little bit. I think there's definitely something to explore there. And I think they can explore that once, you know, Thomas finds out the truth about the stealing of the Forrester originals and you'll get really angry. Maybe that will split them up for a bit and allow for Saul to slide in. I really hope so. My fingers are crossed. You're rooting for the underdog. Yes. (laughs) And I I have to tell you that I'm sort of relieved that they took a breather from Ridge and Quinn. Oh, goodness, yes, I hear that. I mean, I was loving the story really up until the point where they got back from Australia and Ridge, you know, got down on one knee again in the um, CEO Forster Creations office, and he was like, you know, Brooke, marry me, don't let me go, and she was like, I have to, and that's really when the story started slipping for me, and same thing with you know, Katie kind of black twin. So the story, you know, that was once my favorite and really on the um, the edge of the seat kind of story is kind of not doing it for me anymore. I'm ready to move on. Want some new stuff? Yeah, definitely. And I, I mean, get the secret revealed. Get that secret revealed, and and back to Thomas and Sally. Do you think, well, I see Wyatt coming in from the background, though, too. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and you still want Saul. Yes, I do. I'm rooting for that. You don't want I either think. one of them with her. Yeah, and I just, you know, really, I mean, if this is where we're going to go with Wyatt, and if this is the type of story that we're going to, give the character, I say let's write the character out for maybe a while and then revisit that in a couple of months. Wyatt? Write write Wyatt out for a while? Yeah, I just think, um, you know, to have him get involved in the Sally territory, I think it's too much right now. You know, that character's got a lot going on. You know, Saul loves her. Thomas loves her. She's got the Forrester secret um, about the designs, which is obviously about to be revealed, maybe even tomorrow. Um, So, you know, it's like just maybe take a breather for a second. Don't try and shove too many things in our faces, especially since it's a um, half-hour show. Um, So either white ride out for uh, just a bit or, um, you know, stick them with somebody else. You make a valid point. You make a valid point. So we covered our B&B, and let's head on to Days of Our Lives. And, Carolyn, are you there? Are yeah, you with I'm me, here. Carolyn? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm here. I'm here, David. <laughs> okay, so, so my, my uh, thing is, for all of those, uh, I remember at our Days of Our Lives group, I remember seeing a post saying, Oh no, I'm getting sick. I'm I'm seeing Theo and Claire in bed. <laughs> oh, oh goodness. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. And, and uh, I responded, and this is my this is my universal response with that. Next time you see that. Have a ginger ale handy. Oh dear. <laughs> but um No well hope hopefully that storyline will uh <laughs> will fade fast. I see on hopefully. social media they don't like they don't like any of the teenage uh, storyline, all this with Theo and 
Oh, talking to Chad about having, you know, sex for the first time. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, let's not, let's not go there. And now there, yeah. I, what's, what's happening with, um, with Abby and Chad, yeah. are they, uh, oh, are Abby they going to split? Yeah. What's happening uh, today. there? Yeah. I missed it today. You missed it today? Oh my God. Yeah. Someone better <laughs> set up. Casey? <laughs> Did you watch it yet? Um, no, I actually have it on my DVR. It's the only one I haven't watched today. <laughs> oh, my God, we're three for three. Well, oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no, let's go. Let's go to the you know, we still got Nicole. a lot of other yeah. stuff to discuss. Let's go with what what we know already. Yeah, okay. Nicole and so uh, We know and... <laughs> that they're renewing their vows. That's oh, the point. God, don't even get me started on that. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, I'm so fed up with that. Yes, you know, either uh, get them together or get them apart, but they're gonna—I think they're gonna drag it out. Well, sorry and, to you say, know, they were like, um, you know, Abby gave that speech at the uh, pub, I believe it was yesterday's episode, and she mentioned Chad and I have been married a long time. I'm like, um, <laughs> since when? <laughs> did they age you guys more or you know what did we do a time jump that I missed I mean <laughs> well I guess to them a couple of years is a long time but yeah it's, you, 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 <laughs> it's you, you, make a, you make a good point yeah you make a good point because I remember you know Tom and Alice renewed their vows on what was said to be their 50th anniversary yeah. and Chad and um, Gabby, oh, I almost said Gabby. Uh, Abby, you know they're doing it of of about fifty minutes with each other. <laughs> so you know it's like I, uh, the show is so hard to watch right now. I can't wait until Ron's material starts. Oh, yeah, I everyone's know. waiting for that. And what what about no and uh, uh, social media again? They don't like how they're going to. Uh, end with Nicole uh, after all that she's been through. This storyline with Scooter's getting that's uh, when is that going to end? Um, well, and, I think now, she I think airs it, November. Oh yeah, I think it was cute that they mentioned her past because I've mentioned that a lot. You know, when Chloe and Nicole go back and judging each other, and I'm like, well, Chloe, you were a prostitute. Nicole was a porn star, so I think. You know, it's funny to me when I heard that they brought back that history of Nicole um, in pornographic films, but now it's just getting old. And I'm like, yes. you can't come up with new material for this powerhouse actress as she exits your show and leaves a huge gap. I mean, come on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I know it. So the other sad part is we got um, Eduardo was arrested. Oh, set, up by, set up by Deimos. So Eduardo's going. Oh. Deimos is going. Um, all the <laughs> the actors are are acting. I don't know. I don't know oh. Vincent is. Pardon. He's still. He Vincent is still kicking. Yeah, but he's Actually, he's on his yeah, he's he on his definitely. way out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we don't know when though. Yeah. No, yeah, I think it's going to soon. Oh, it's soon. Yeah. I was just happy to see Eduardo go. I love A. Martinez. I really do. I think he's a great actor, very, you know, well-versed in his craft. But the character, it never, you know, stuck. It was almost like trying to throw something out of the wall and make it stick. The character was just awful. Which, oh, no, you know, was, it's sad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, the younger, you know, when they younger did his, days. Yeah. Yeah. When they did his last episode and the um, prison um, interrogation room slash Hope's office slash um, <laughs> <laughs> Roman's former office, you know, I felt nothing. They were all crying, and I'm like, okay, he's been here all of five minutes. What are we crying about? Yeah, they're. Uh... They're rotating the uh, the scenes. They're moving pictures, and it's <laughs> it's the same. It's the same office. It's oh. just it's too much with all these cast cuts because 
daytime, and I don't know why writers can't get, you know, this through their head at days, daytime is continuity. That means continuity and sets and yeah. characters. Yeah, you know, and characters. These people go into this job for decades, not two months. Yeah. But uh, if people want to leave on their own, we can't. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how you can deal with that. I mean, you have to roll with the punches, and then hopefully, you get a recast that works. When I know some actors were fired, and when they leave, I'm like, oh, okay. But you know, when they're fired, like you know, take John Paul Lafayette, who recently stepped into the role of Philip. He was fired. This is yeah. a legacy character, and if you can't come up for story on him, you know, shame on you because I can come up with a thousand stories. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, they, no, could yeah. they could have worked better. They could have they could have worked out better with uh, mm-hmm. with him. And I don't know if they're trying to get J. Kenneth Johnson back. I think that I think that was the original deal. They're trying to lure him back. I don't know if he wants to, but mm. but yeah, you know, just, if yeah. Ron comes back, if Ron is taken over, maybe he will bring J- try and lure JP back, and Ron will take care of JP. Well, like and Ron, I mean, oh my goodness! I when I heard because I actually said a couple of years ago that. Ron would be a great writer at days. Um, and when I, you know, got the news that they got him as the new head writer, I was shouting it from the rooftops <laughs> because this is alone. a man who honors history. This is a man who boosts ratings, who makes them skyrocket in this day and age. So I'm ready. Bring on Ron. I only wish his material could start much sooner. Yeah, me too. And but uh, it is what it is, you know. Yeah, we're yep. we're waiting very patiently. I'm 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 waiting. Hurry, hurry! <laughs> I want some good <laughs> storylines. So it just, in the meantime, it's so disjointed. God. Yeah, it's it's so just dis- disjointed. There's there's no flow. There's no flow at all. There's no flow. Well, it, yeah, yeah. It seems like every week, you know, Monday through Friday, I watch it, and it's like, did this air yesterday? It seems like the same episode. Um, yes. Every single day. Yeah. Which is yeah. bad and, news. I mean, I looked at the ratings, and they got smacked down to a two million again. And that's oh. not good news. No, no. Well, I don't know. I don't like to. I don't like to look at the numbers because they make me nervous. <laughs> yes. See, <laughs> I have to. You know, running a soap opera news site, and unfortunately, I have to. Sometimes it pains me, but. <laughs> Got to do it. I really don't like to look at the numbers. I I try to keep an open mind, and I enjoy everything that's been on because I enjoy the soaps. Period. Mm-hmm. Well, I think things when yeah. it gets when it gets interesting and the actors are really pulling at all the stops, then they let them go. It's it's, yeah. it's yep. weird. It's weird. Especially oh. Vincent. Oh gosh, I can't believe we lost Vincent. Well, I has, I thought the last year, I mean, they, he brought some, you know, I didn't like his character as such. He is, you know, really right. mean. But his acting, you know, has been su- superb. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's going to be a, a loss for sure. Yeah. I mean, he's, to me, my favorite part of the show right now. I, I love him. I adore him. And, you know, my hopes and prayers are that, you know, they snatch him back up. Oh, God, I hope so. Um, because he <laughs> just brings a fun and a fire to the show. Well, isn't he up for a nomination? Yes, he is. He is um, outstanding yes. supporting <laughs> actor. Yes. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yes. But, that's you know, yeah. that's another story. I feel like anybody got that's a nomination another. just... Yeah. <laughs> everybody uh, got a nomination just like everybody got a card from Oprah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the one the one couple I'm rooting for right now is Eric and Jennifer. Oh yes. 
I really am. I'm hoping he, Eric, comes out of his trance. Um, that's what I call it because he's very down on himself. And Victor isn't helping matters. No, he's being really nasty. But with uh, Eric, is there something something coming about with, isn't there a young girl that he's mentoring and she's making him chocolate chip cookies? And is there some like funky storyline going on there? Is she, uh, she going to be going to come between on uh, Jennifer? Yeah, Jennifer and Eric, there's always, there's always that. There's always, yeah, they just tell... Well, Eric doesn't get a break, and Jennifer doesn't get a break. You know, I love that, that um, scene with him and Victor in the park, actually, just because it was so real to me. I mean, you think about it, you intense. know, how much Victor loves Maggie. And, yeah. you know, Eric took her son. And so, you know, I was okay with Victor being that mean because I thought it added so many layers to the story and it added some much needed realism. Yes. Yeah, it did. It needed, it needed the realism and hopefully it's going to, it's going to be a slow burn and turn out to be one of the better stories that they got going because (laughs) <laughs> Fingers Poor crossed. Jennifer doesn't get a break, like we said. Yeah. You know, she fans didn't like her with Daniel, so maybe they yeah, like her with I'm one of them. <laughs> because I think that for one reason they just wanted Jack back. Well, and I'm one of those fans who was like Jack and Jennifer are nobody. But now, you know, since they started this whole thing with her and Eric, I'm like, you know what? There is life after Jack. If, and if I can get used to it, I'm sure the others can too. Yes. <laughs> they, they, have, they have something together. I think they can make a good pairing. Definitely. And it's time we get Missy Reeves a story worthy of her talent. Yes, yes. Ma'am, thank you. I agree. I agree. Yes. Yes, I do. It's how was her? How was her, how was her husband doing? How was her husband doing in real life? He's doing better. Scott's yeah, doing yeah, better. that's what he I ha- heard too. I heard he's doing much better. No, yeah. he had a heart. He had a heart attack, right? Well, he had a scare. No, oh, okay. he had a like okay. murmur. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, well, that would um, be hard to come into work and and carry on and do your job when you know you have that going on at home. So I was always thinking yeah, about her in the scenes. Yeah. So right now we have we have Eric and Jennifer as a potential. Hope and Rafe are just hanging in there for a while. Um, they got uh. most of. <laughs> How many people care for Hope and Rafe? I've seen well, online. Here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> well, they can't let go. Of, they can't let go of Bo. You know that's that that's the thing. That, you know, there's a yeah, long history there. I don't think they'd be happy with anyone history. with Hope. No. I was trying to get used to it. Dave I really was. was. I good, think. But then it, you know, it took a great step forward for me. I thought that camping trip was absolutely adorable. You know, that little camping set up in the park. Yeah. And yeah. then they did the kitchen thing with the food, and I was like, oh, that's adorable. And then it shut off for me completely the day in the pub um, where Rafe went after uh, Deimos and Hope was trying to protect him and all. And I was oh, like, yeah. seriously? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we're not ready. You know, that's something she would have done for a guy she's, you know, known for years. You know, I just, we yeah. need to build more of that foundation, and we're not doing that anymore, which no. is, no. you know, no, it's, it's like, come on, it's Galen Gehring, it's and it's on. Christian Alfonso. Mm. 
Yeah. Well, they seem oh, to forget in the, in the storyline about. Uh, I I used to like Rafe and Kate. Do you remember way back when? Oh yes, yeah. I loved them. I uh, see. I thought that they had good chemistry and it was uh, it was great. But they don't even seem to let on that they they had anything <laughs> going on together. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's just. I, when I had my first interview um, with a soap actor, it was Robert Newman, and we talked about Reva and Josh from Guiding Light, and I asked him, what was it like being a super couple? And he said, you do not build a super couple overnight. It takes years. It takes um, a lot of bonding with that person to make that couple. And on days right now, we're acting like Hope and Rafe or Josh and Reva, like they've been together for 21 years, and yes. they yes. have not. They, have they not. just haven't. I don't think they have the luxury of time anymore, though, either. Oh, well, that's true. Well, that's true. That's true. But, you know, we've got 37 minutes an episode. I'm sure they can give me 15 minutes of that time to do more cute scenes together. If not, I'm checking out of this couple for good. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, Before we go on, um, we got an email um, from Judith. um, Regarding Judith, um, she wanted to say that her Instagram and t- Twitter is at real underscore J Chapman and on Facebook.com Judith Chapman fans. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, and she's very on social media. Yeah. 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 Like, follow her, guys. She's amazing, and I yeah. love her post on Facebook. Well, the little bit that I uh, I did a bit of research, and she certainly, she keeps herself busy. She's uh, involved in a lot of things. She's a dynamo. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, so. Very, in- very interesting lady. So, to end, okay, so let's, what do we want? on days of our lives in the future? Oh, goodness. Do we have enough time? <laughs> Probably I not. Want, I, want it to go back, I want it to go back to the good old days where there were some fa- family values and some just get a nice nucleus there that, you know, you can fall back on because the, the whole premise of days of our lives, they're just everything scattered all over the place. There's just – and there's uh, – Marlena, she's still pining. I mean, what's happening with her? She she was the rock there for a while, and it's uh... John is coming back. We saw him. Yeah. You saw his first air, so yeah. he's on his way. Yeah. That's well, nice to I see. Was... Yeah. That's and, I, don't and I don't think it'll last. I don't. Th- I just have a feeling it's not going to last. <laughs> I well, want it to. It does it ever. <laughs> Sherry <Yeah>. Thomas. <laughs> you know who Sherry Thomas is, who is currently working there and is going to be the story consultant with Ron when he joins. Okay. Okay. That. Now, Sherry was a very popular in the 80s with the super couples of days. And one of them okay. happened to be John and Marlena. And I think okay. she was instrumental in that. Okay. So maybe there's I something just, to hope for there. I just hope that um, <clears throat> they move back to more uh, structured storyline. Um, yeah. You know, and here's the thing. Dave thinks, you know, sometimes that structure means slow. And it does not. Um, structure means a good, a well thought out storyline, well outlined to go, you know, on for months or years. Um, so yeah, just better structure. And also, I would just um, like to see Belle return and interact more with Claire because I've kind of missed Belle, and I wish they would have kept Martha Madison around. And who knows, maybe she will come back. 
We'll just have to wait and see what the future holds. But I'm very excited as we go into these um, summer months and once we get to the end of July, beginning of August, we see Ron's material. So I can't wait. I'm ready. Yep, we're all we're all ready to see some some changes, some positive changes in days. <laughs> yep, <laughs> we look forward to that. Now onward to General Hospital, and let's find out. Okay, Olivia is gone, but. Julian still may be lurking in the shadows. Oh, goodness. This story. I just can't. (laughs) Honestly, this better be an exciting climax with Julian. Because here's the thing. Um, GH has gotten so predictable, and I'm so upset with General Hospital. We know that man's alive. (laughs) Do we do we really know he's alive? Well, I just I don't know who else it could be unless you know they're pulling you know something we didn't expect and having somebody from Alexis's past return, um, or even somebody on the canvas. You know, sometimes they pull that stuff where it's actually somebody on the canvas. Um, but if it's Julian, I'm going to kind of be upset. Um, I love. Will DeVry, I've loved him since he was on The Bold and the Beautiful Ass Storm. But, you know, this story is just a joke to me. I'm like, you know, let's get Alexis away from the Julian era. You know, let's move her on to bigger and better things. Um, You know, just do something else. And I swear to God, if he, you know, Will DeVry is back as a different character like they did with um, Jeffrey Vincent Paris recently. Oh, I will stop yeah. watching because it's it's a mess. You think it's messy? No, I think it is. And I think General Hospital is starting to really fall apart at the seams and not, not good. You know, step it up a little bit. I know they can. Uh, Gene uh, Passanante and Shelby Altman are great writers. Frank is a great executive producer, and I know they can step it up. They're women and men of many talents. So let's go. Bring back the general hospital we love. We love. Now, we know that Jane Elliott's last day is May 4th. How do you think he's going out? Well, first of all, I um, when I reported uh, the news um, on my soap site, Daytime Indulgence, along with so many others, um, it was painful for me to write that article um, because I love Jane and I love um, our Tracy Angelica Quartermain, and I really hope they honor her and um, – I think she is going to go out in an emotional way that will leave us in tears, I've heard. Um, So I really hope they do her justice. And, you know, let's start seeing some flashbacks and let's start seeing a montage, you know, really honor this lady's um, 21-year history with the show. And I know, real quick, most people are going to say, well, she's been on the show since 1978. However, she has taken some breaks. So at General Hospital, she's actually done 21 years. Um, So, yeah, I just, I hope they honor the 21 years she has had with the show. I hope, I hope they do some. Now, I was a little disappointed about that trip to Turkey. I thought that would have been a lot more. Well, I am interested to know who that girl is. And I've heard rumors um, that that girl is possibly a quarter name. So, so the the painting is a is a resemblance to Tracy. So you don't think? No, it can. Are you thinking twin? 
Um, no, I was talking about the um, girl that Laura heard crying. And um, when Laura and Tracy walked out yeah. of the monastery, okay. um, you know, we saw that girl um, lurking. Um, and I've heard rumors that she's possibly a Quartermain family member, uh, somebody to kind of replace Tracy in a way and kind of bring in the next generation and make that the next Tracy Quartermain. I don't know if that's true, but that's just what I keep hearing a lot. I wonder, you think um, a relic, you think that she's a relative of, the girl is uh, forgotten Quartermain? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, and she could, you know, and I don't know if that's true, and I've also heard um, that she bears a striking resemblance to that girl that was encountered around Casadine Island last year. Um, so we'll just see where it oh, goes. Um, I'm definitely let's interested. see where it goes. Well, I, I thought that's where... Um, I thought they were going to keep her, keep them in Turkey uh, for a longer period of time. Yeah, which, you know, is really sad because we're really nearing Jane Exit, and I'm not yeah. really. I wish we had her for a couple more months. I wish we had her permanently. But, you know, she's been in soaps for 51 years, which is astounding. And I wish Jane the best in her retirement years. And, um, who knows? Tracy could always possibly pop up again. So we'll just have to wait and, and see could. what the future holds. We'll have to wait and see. So on the other side of town, we've got Nell coming clean to Sonny that she never did sleep with him. and draw, She just drugged him and made him think so, and she just kept silent. So Sonny's all upset. Mm-hmm. So he and, goes and he tries to tell Carly, but it's a little too late. Well, and um, I'll touch on Carly later in my explanation with the storyline, but I have to start out at Sunny's house uh, with now actually revealing to Sunny the truth uh, behind that night. Um, when that started out and when those scenes were taking place, Maurice Bernard and Chloe Lanier, again, great acting. Oh, my gosh, they are some of the best in daytime. Um, My only issue is is that reveal was not dramatic enough. It was not hyped up enough. Um, The only thing that saved it was the acting. Um, I mean, this is a girl who is who we are supposed to believe to be Carly 2.0 and it's just it's not doing it for me and you know nothing got exciting for me until Sonny showed up at Jack um, at Carly's house and I had it in the back of my mind Jack was going to come downstairs just wait for it and he did and uh, Sonny exchanged some hurtful words to Carly so um, it didn't start out you know, to me, I almost skipped through the scenes, um, but then we got to Carly's house, and I was like, okay, here we go. Here's the heightened drama. Let's bring it on. And it was a little lackluster. Oh, definitely, especially at Sunny's house. I mean, and, you know, even a little at Carly's house. Um, you know, she slept with Jax, and I don't, you know, like I don't know why that wasn't bigger, you know, that should have been more explosive than, you know, it was kind of like the bomb at General Hospital that didn't go off, the one that Olivia planted. It was like we were so close to an explosion, and it's like, no, no, never mind. It's almost like um, the writers are a little afraid to back themselves up into this corner, but here's the thing, when you... You know, I write myself, and when you back a story up into a corner, it's fun, and it's fun for the reader because then they want to know how you're going to get out of this. So, you know, GH writers, if you're listening, don't be afraid to back yourselves up into this corner and, you know, just explode stuff. 
We love daytime. We love General Hospital. We know GH is the action-packed soap. Explode. Explode all climaxes. Stop with the lackluster storytelling, please. Valid point. Okay, let's go on to Jake's secret. And there's so many hints online about what he's hiding and what that scarecrow represents. And I don't know which one to... Actually, I don't believe any of them until I actually see it. So what do you believe? Who the scarecrow could be? Jake, yeah. Um, so I believe, and, you know, I'm just going based off that conversation that Anna and Obrecht had, um, and that wasn't about Jake, it was about Valentine, but um, Faison was mentioned, Cesar Faison, and then we cut to scenes with Jake, and we talk about the scarecrow that he saw in Cassadine Island, and, you know, I feel like it is Cesar, that he did see Cesar Faison, because, um, Jake said him and the old lady were friends, the Scarecrow and Helena. Um, yeah, they were. And I'm That's just true thinking there. to myself, it's got to be Cezanne. Um, I don't think they would bring back Victor. I know I've heard that going around, that that possibly is one of the choices. But again, Teo of Inglesias is, he, he currently steps back into the role of Andre on day. So I don't think he would come back to GH at the moment. So, yeah, I think it stays on. And he does resemble a scarecrow a little bit. Oh, definitely. I, yeah, I mean, you know, when we add face on back with his crazy hair and, you know, his yeah. wacky mannerisms, I was like, you know what? This makes sense. So it has to be based on. And honestly, I don't know who else it could be. You know, it's not going to be like, Kevin, you know? No. It's not going to be. So, okay, the ne- next next phase is, let's see, Charlotte. Oh, goodness. I know this is not your favorite, but it looks like today <laughs> that blue is making inroads. Yeah. I mean, I love the little girl. I think she's adorable and um they find them you know, cute, she's, don't they? Yeah, she's a cute little actress. Um it's just it's not doing it for me. I keep, you know, wishing the storyline never existed, you know, and I really you know, as we get more and more of the Charlotte Lulu Valentine I don't see any reason for it, really. I mean, there's no reason for the little girl. There's no reason for Charlotte. Valentina's is involved in the Anna Nina thing, and Lulu um, is involved in just, you know, not being Valentine's biggest fan. I really don't think we ever needed Charlotte Cassidy. I really don't. Or the other little girl to come at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It just, you know, we have Lulu setting up, you know, trying to set up her perfect life. Um, they moved into that new house, um, her, Dante, and Rocco. Um, and it's just, I think that's what we should focus on because there's not too many lighthearted moments on GH because the show has always been very dark and action packed. But, um, you know, they are the calm down family moments and I think it should have stayed that way and I think the Charlotte story was just a bad move and you know if we could maybe perhaps do a storyline where Lulu imagined the whole thing I'd be down for that at this point <laughs> uh, it, sometimes a story um, I know they probably just wanted to get the other baby story up out in the open and done with, and then have them mm-hmm. have their family, you know? I, hey, guys, I'm listening, and I'm going to cut in here. I'm just going to okay. say that I don't mind that Charlotte is on, but I don't like 
the revolving door of mothers to get to the so point. So I hear you there. Right. And fathers. Uh, to me, that was a whole mess. Um, you know, it's one thing to point at, at the finger at somebody and say, you know, you're the father, um, and then come to find out, no, he's the father and she's the mother. But they kept going on, no, you're the father, no, you're the father, no, you're the And yeah. I just did not like no. that at all. It was just too much. It was, um, and, and, you know, the thing is, is I don't mind maybe two paternity stories. I believe Ron mm-hmm. did three at the max, but here's the thing. Don't have it revolve around child, one child. Don't have it revolve around just six characters because it was so dumb and it is still dumb. I just, it irks me. It's literally the worst part of General Hospital for me is the Charlotte storyline. And what I don't like about that as well is I want Lulu to grow up, okay? She, yes, is the mother. Yes, she lost out on quite a few years with her, and now she's being relegated to seeing her once a week. But come on, stop the whining. Do what you need to do for the judge. And don't expect things to happen, one, two, three, because that's just not how it works. You know, that's not how real life works in a lot of these situations that, like we spoke with with Judith, are are about real life. And the courts don't just hand over somebody just because you're the parent. Yeah. You know, and, and what's best for the child is what it needs to happen first. Yeah, and what's best for the child, um, in my opinion, was Valentine. Because honestly, right. I think when we went into the court battle, and even you know today um, with the current episodes, it seems like Lulu only wants Charlotte as a way to get back at Valentine, and that is so childish and that is so hurtful to the child and what she truly needs. Well, especially after she saw how Charlotte reacted to her when she told her she was her mother. I mean, my gosh, the child locked her in a room and took off. Can you imagine (laughs) what that did to her psyche? I mean, she doesn't understand. She's been told, like I said, that's your dad, that's your dad, that's your dad. And now it's, well, no, she's not your mother. I'm your mother. But then we have, um, uh, what's her name? As a, Nina, mm-hmm. as a stepmother, who she's grown attached to, my God, when that child, if she's around long enough for her to soar us, for her to be sore us, or, um, you know, she just grows into the part, or somebody replaces her as an older one, whatever, she's going to be messed up as an adult if they don't take care of this now. Well, you yeah, know, they do. it's just, you know, not only does she have all these daddy issues, you brought up the mommy issues. And right. the woman she thought was her mother, I'm just going to say the child, probably four. Um, but for four years of her life, she came to know Claudette as her mother. Exactly. And then she finds out she's dead um, right. because she committed suicide um, or she was killed. We don't know where that's going quite yet. But, right. you know, it's like give the child a rest. And shame on Lulu. Oh my gosh, I don't think yes. I ever hated Lulu until now. Exactly. And I, it's not so much that I hate her, but I'm not happy with how she's being mm-hmm. handling this and how it's being written for her. You know, we know that Lulu is is not as mature as she should be because, you know, that's just how she's been all these years. And we've grown to accept that. But now you're a parent. Now it's time to grow up. And now you have mm-hmm. to think of somebody else other than yourself. Yeah, this exactly. is not the same Lulu who was worried about if she should get an abortion or not, you know, back in 2006. This is mm-hmm. supposed to be a Lulu who is trying to build a home for Rocco, who is married to Dante, who is trying to make herself a life. You know, don't bring back that teenage-ish, 20-ish Lulu mentality. Right. Keep right. it adult. Keep it real. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm with you on that. Yeah, it, um, it's just a situation. Yeah. 
Um, I'd just like to mention before you guys talk anymore, and if I talk anymore, but I just saw on Twitter (laughs) that Mike Logan tweeted that the daytime Emmys will live stream Sunday, April 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook Live and Twitter Periscope Producer. Now, I'm assuming they mean that it's going to be on Facebook Live on Daytime Emmy's Facebook Live page. Yeah. Um, now, the Twitter Periscope producer, now I, I watch Periscope all the time, so I'm assuming that they're going to connect their Periscope to Twitter and it's going to be live from that. But I have to find out more as far as, you know, is it under the Periscope Daytime Emmy handle or what? You know, so that way everybody knows. Yeah. But well, and also, you I know, maybe Facebook. find out for the fans who can't watch it live if it will be uploaded on YouTube, like the next day, like mm-hmm. it has been the past two years. Uh, probably, but I have, you know, with Facebook Live, you can always go back and watch it after it's over. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. And then Periscope yeah. is the same thing. You can always go back and watch it. The only time that you can't is if they delete it, and I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think so no. either, but that just makes me so angry. I'm so upset with the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. I'm telling you, it's a mess every time, and they should have this, you know, down pat and on a regular way of watching it, you know, and not be changing it every year that the fans don't know if they're coming or going and if they're going to be able to see it or not. Well, and, you know, they always say they can't find a network because Daytime Emmys is no longer successful. And I'm here to tell you fans that when that show was on pop television a few years ago, it trended, hashtag Daytime Emmys, trended past Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. So there still is a market for it. So You know, I think they're in denial. I think these, I think these, you know, these TV networks are in denial that they can't possibly be better or more loved than a certain primetime television show. And that's not yeah. true, people. That's not true. Wake up and smell the coffee. I mean, thank God for Angela, Angelica McDaniel over at CBS who loves Bold and who loves Wyandar. And she's really a champion. Thank God for her. Um, And there Mm -hmm. needs to be more people in the industry like her who realize that soaps are not dead. Because here's the thing, there might be four on, but let me tell you, 15 million people people a day here in the U.S. watch soaps alone. And then you look overseas with Bold and Beautiful, that gets 26 million people a day. Soaps are not dead. They are. No. No. Not dead. No, the only person that thinks they're dead are the higher-ups that don't want to spend the money anymore and give the time and think that they're going to make a bigger cash um, <clears throat> amount of money uh, from, you know, putting on a cooking show or whatever. And I'll tell you what, I'm that person that has not watched ABC television during the day since they canceled All My Children and One Life to Live except to watch General Hospital. My TV set is never on Channel 7 or whatever, I should say, ABC TV during the day other than General Hospital. That's it. Well, and you know, here's the thing. After AMC and One Life to Live were canceled, the ratings went down all across the board for that network. It dropped um, because, you know, there's four major networks, CBS, NBC, Fox, ABC. ABC Mm -hmm. was number two when Mm -hmm. AMC and One Life to Live were on. Once mm-hmm. they canceled yep. those shows a month later, it was number four. And it mm-hmm. almost went to number five. Yeah. And and what don't they get about that, you know? And, again, it comes down to money. That's all it is. It does. And, yeah. you know, and unfortunately, those shows I really do not believe are coming back. But here's the thing. No. Keep the spirits alive. You know, let's get more characters on GH, you know, keep the spirits alive. But then unfortunately, guys, they aren't coming back. And that's just how things are. Right. 
Yeah, I know. I still get people asking me every now and again if I think that they'll come back, you know, now that it's been switched back over to ABC. But, no, I really don't. Yeah, I really Nathan don't. don't have... Yeah, Nathan Barney I'm keeping my kids away. They're happy with their daytime lineup over at ABC right. with the Chew, the View, and GH, and Good Morning America. They're happy with that, you guys. And um, right. it costs a lot of money to produce a show on your online app. But, you know, the good uh, fight um, over at CBS All Access, it's not only nine ninety nine a month, uh, but their next season is not this, you know, coming September. Fans will have to wait until 2019. Um, oh, my gosh, the next you're kidding. Season. Yeah, so it's not – it's just not economically feasible to bring those shows back, unfortunately, but let's keep the spirits alive. Right. Keep the spirit and keep our candles lit. That's, that's you know, if, if anything, if anything, I mean, just what I think is because I don't think they could ever, even if they wanted to bring back all my children or one life to live, uh, bring back all of the same actors and actresses because a lot of them have moved on to so many different things. Um, make a new soap. Uh, you know, yeah. from yeah, from you, you know more. people that are still available, or bring and bring on some new characters. I mean, it can work. But yeah, and you know, you're right. Those people have moved on. Yes, they might want to. You know, people have said, <laughs> "I want to," you know, come on GH, but that's not for good, you guys. You know, Susan Lucci does not have another 41 years in her to play Erica Kane on General Hospital. It's just right. You know, it's not going to happen. And I hate to do that. So, like, you know, don't, you know, do not come after me on social media. I'm just telling you <laughs> how it is. I know my stuff there. <laughs> That's just how it is, you guys. But keep the spirits alive. Let's get characters on GH. And we'll just see where time goes with our soaps. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to bring up, because you guys haven't talked about it yet, is the situation between Anna and Valentine. What do you think is going on there? Oh, it's got to be Alex. That's what I'm thinking, too. I mean, you look at Anna, she's more casually dressed, and she's done some weird things. I don't know Mm -hmm. if I'm the only one who's caught on to this, but remember when she... um, Laura rang her doorbell, I believe it was uh, yesterday's episode, and Mm -hmm. she straightened herself up first. Did anybody Mm -hmm. else catch that? Um, No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. That she's doing things that either A, an imposter Anna would do, or B, a Alex, you know, twin would do. Um, So just look for those little mannerisms because they keep hinting at it a lot. Yeah, um, and by what she said yesterday, and of course, it it threw me off, and I thought, what a weird thing to say. Um, You know, when she told Laura, no, she's done going after Valentine, like, you know, not my problem, you know. But then I saw that they switched to the scene where she was on the computer and then started listening to their conversation. So I thought, oh, okay, so it's not as it seems, you know, that she didn't care about it. So, um, Well, and, you know, she also yeah, she ignored, she ignored Griffin's call. Did anybody catch that? And that's yeah, not yeah. an Anna move. That is not an Anna move. Um, right. And she, she looked would at never her do that. Yeah, she looked at her phone almost like she didn't know who it was. And mm-hmm. she and I'm catching on to this that she keeps acting like she doesn't know who anybody is. So, you know, when Laura came to the door, she was like, oh, hello. You know, she didn't say, oh, hi, Laura. You know, it's just, it's weird. So keep watching because I have a feeling it is yeah. Alex or so, an imposter. Yeah, yeah. So catch, so catch me up a little bit. Um, Alex was... And his twin? Yes, on all my children. Because I wasn't watching um, at that time, so. Yeah, it was very short-lived. I believe it was like 1999 through 2002. Uh, Finola was let go from General Hospital. They brought her on all my children as Alexandra. 
which turned out to be Anna's twin. Uh, they haven't mentioned her just because when Robert Guza Jr. wrote General Hospital, he said, that was a whole nother world. I'm not going to mention it. So since like 2003, they haven't mentioned it. Um, so many people forgot who Alex was. Uh, but, yeah, Alex is just plain and simple and a twin. Right. And, David, I posted that on the Take Two Radio's Facebook page, who is Alex, or something like that. It was titled. And go to Soap Central. You know, if you fans are confused, go to SoapCentral.com. Dan J. Kroll has the most accurate bios. Look up Alexandra Devane, who's who in Pine Valley. Go read it. Not, you know, very much to read, just all you need to know about Alex, and you'll be ready for hopefully what we think is the upcoming storyline. Right. Now, the other thing, too, when you guys are talking about Tracy, I didn't read the article yet, but I posted it, you know, that Luke is coming back. So I'm assuming he's coming back to take Tracy. Yes? So is he officially coming back now? Is Anthony Gary officially returning? Um, Let me look at it said, yeah, breaking news, Anthony Gary returns to General Hospital. Let me pull up the article. Was that for my Uh, friends over at Soap Cities? If it was, you know, they're probably listening. So hi, Aki. Hi, Sean. Um, It was a great article. Uh, let's see. It says in Soap Opera Digest, the latest issue of Soap Opera Digest magazine confirms that Geary, who left daytime Sudzer in 2015, will be back. Mm. Uh, one of his alter egos, Sweet Lady, is about to exit the canvas when Sweet Lady Jane Elliott takes her bow on May 4th as she exits the role of Tracy Quartermain. Looks like Yuri will be back for her exit story, although there's no indication just yet as to how long he will be around for. So, yeah, it's been confirmed. How about that? Well, then, you know, I think it's it's really a beginning story. They don't want to quite let the cat out of the bag yet, I think. Um, You know, very few people have posted it. but it does appear to be true. Um, so, yeah, it's just I can't um, wait for Anthony Geary to be back um, and escort Tracy 